about these environments for people to meet and explore and to create. And so this space is really about giving people that opportunity. Um, the video behind you is time lapse from when I started setting up at 3 a.m. and uh, finished cleaning up at 1.30 for the opening night, which had over 20 performers. Um, and, you know, Mac and I were interacting with everybody, kind of explaining what was going on. And, and then on the other side of the wall has been day two, three, and four. So day five will be added to that later. Uh, yeah, I was uh, taking time lapse on a GoPro and uh, just continuous loop all day long. Um, and so you're being filmed right now. So there's being created a you know time lapse of a time lapse of a time lapse. That's so. Uh, it's becoming very. Kim Gordon like absolutely loves him, and she says that if it wasn't for this artist, there would be no song. Dan Graham. Dan Graham. Dan Graham. Thank you for that. Yeah. I need to look it up. I do. Dan Graham. Once you um, actually, I might have a book I can let you borrow. <sighs> that would be perfect. Yeah. Dan Graham is super awesome. He's really interested in self-aware creating spaces where people can uh, interact are, uh, and also see themselves what other people are seeing them as well. Wow. Yeah. So that you're, what you're talking about is, reminds me of that. And I see those environments as being very enriching, you know, for the soul, for the spirit, for the mind, and like, and I feel that that's what the juice does for people too. Is why I'm doing it as part of this performance. Yes. Is yes. I've been a student here four years now. I know there's no good food on campus. This is my third, you know, show in this space, and and it's always been object-based before. And and I sit outside all hungry, wishing I had brought some good food, and was able to have some real like conversations with people. And this just you know, it's, it's a, a catalyst for that. Like, a, while they're waiting for this juice, it becomes this fantastic conversation, and, and I'm the healthiest I've been out after, after any show, mm -hmm. you know. I, I just knew coming up to this, I'd work hard, work hard, work hard, and then have this juice cleanse, and... Uh, then you also have a chance to display your ceramics. It's true. I mean, I, I wish I'd given you one of my ceramic cups that was just brought back all clean, but that's part of the experience, is like, yeah drinking from the stuff that I made, even though I've never wanted to be a potter, you know, that's never been like a goal. I've wanted to get good at it, and it's a skill set that I'm happy that I have, um, but it's not what I am, you know, it's just, uh, and, a, and an object maker is certainly like a much bigger part of me, and uh, not everything needs to be functional, it's, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, so I don't think I'll leave object making, and I still feel like I'm a maker when I do something like this. Oh, yeah. Well, it is. It is. But, you know, I mean, if you want to, you want to get recognized for your work, I think that there's a bigger appetite for art that's like this versus mm. things that have more mm. Do you see any elements of uh, Pierre's show here? I do. And that, I mean, I didn't want to jump into that. Because, no, it's part of it. Um, I mean, the first thing I was like, oh, check out Dan Graham. Because, I mean, he's super awesome. But Pierre Hugh, I think this is more inviting than Pierre Hugh. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm not trying to totally disorient. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, I took my niece and my nephew to that show, not knowing what to expect. I just mm -hmm. knew that there was going to be a dog in the gallery, and that would be really fun for them. So when we uh, walked in, my niece and my nephew squeezed my hand extra tight. But they love when, um, they love the part where the gentleman says your name. Yeah. Like, my guess is her name. So that was pretty fun. I ended up becoming pretty good friends with Marlon, uh, human's handler. Yeah. We hung out a couple times outside of the space. And he wants to do a similar thing. Yeah? Yeah. He's from Kassel, Germany. And uh, 
so you know, document is there. Um, is it every five or ten years? And uh, they have this amazing collection of. Uh, this one's hung up. Is this just like a pulp extractor? Wow, the couch is empty. It's been like booked all day. You haven't been able to sit. Yeah, maybe I'll take a seat. That's also what part of this is about, is like educating. Because these are two different types of machines. Mm -hmm. you, so what you have is, is a centrifugal. So how's it been going and, for you? Uh, they're fantastic machines because it's hard to, to mess it up. You know, it takes everything. It takes hard um, stuff super well. It takes soft uh, stuff super well. Performance art. Where this and one requires so uh, a morning, lot more food preparation uh, and day, you know stuff like this can happen where wow. it gets kind of gummed up and you have to. Open but somehow it the the hybridity of your glass works somehow feels like it leads you this way. Maybe or to, so to me, I and they it somehow connect. And there's so many things you can do with it. I mean, this week I have more than I can handle. Like my compost pile is not super happy right now because it's overloaded. I feel like I'm but, able, uh, yeah, I'm still you can throw it in soups. Yes, yes. You, know, you can make crackers. Working with the electronics, I'm able to, to continue with, uh, with what I was doing. Um, it's just interesting to bring it into the, into the gallery you know, as a performance. It's, it's a little frustrating because I constantly get distracted from, from what I'm working on, but I guess that's kind of also the part of the, uh, the point of it is that I get to interact with so not to end your break, but, but can we go back inside and yeah, can you show me what you've been up to? Not a problem. Yeah, so this desk is actually uh, part of my studio, and Brian and I share a studio in the ceramics facility. And um, this desk is uh, uh, specifically we brought in to work on electronics projects, you know, so I wanted to really force uh, electronics into my work and, and really provide a place for uh, a regular kind of static place for it in the studio. And so um, we had talked about an ongoing performance that I was going to do during the show and it, it sort of made sense to just bring, bring the desk in here. and. Brian's really interested in, in setting up artist residencies in the future, and so in a way we're looking at this is that I am the resident artist for the residency that he has created in this show right now. So I may be uh, officially logged as Brian's first resident. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And so um, what you were just filming was the geomantic instrument that I built for this show, and that's a digitized version of, um, well, it's my digital interpretation of the practice of geomancy. And it's an electrical device with uh, metallic sensors, and um, it, it helps us divine the future. And so, what I like about, you know, part of the reason we wanted to bring the device into the room is that it's, it's interactive, you know, it's a, it's a, an object that people can, um, can take something from my performance and interact with it without me, you know, so I can be doing something else. Um, some of the other stuff that's going on here is this device, which I've uh, hooked up to this tank of liquid nitrogen. And what's happening here is I'm creating an electromagnetic field using this device that I can adjust with some of these uh, switches, and because the geomantic instrument reads electromagnetic waves, this is a way that I'm able to interact with the viewers that are interacting with the device. It also makes an interesting sound. Um, simultaneously, yeah, part of why I got into it is a little bit cardboard, and so I'm developing these ideas for sensors um, that respond to, to being hit or drummed upon and those are being fed into these little sampler chips um, where we've sampled uh, noises that we've made ourselves or that different people have made when they've come into the galleries. Um, I'm also working on a sensitive amplifier to put inside of this device so that I can amplify the sound as I'm working with it and, and use it as an instrument. Uh, additionally, well, I have been sports, dealing with a few so uh, of the viewers who come in who are just interested in electronics or, you know, so this provides a place for me to demonstrate 
different techniques or ideas. Uh, like, you know, a few people have come in and talked to me about projects they're working on, and that it's become just a place to talk. Nice. This is great. This is the um, sort of the idea bin, we could call it. This is just a glass bottle that was furnished to me since I'm a glass artist. But this was something that we scavenged, and I was just really inspired by a lot of the things that we found in the box. Um, there's some really interesting old tools, and I just thought that uh, these things might might sort of feed into the into the projects that I'm working on. And, you know, they they can be integrated into this device, or they could start a conversation. Um, it's also just uh, provides another activity for people who are in the gallery. Sometimes they like to dig through the box. Um, yeah. Do you want me to walk you through the rest of the show, or? or you... I think I'll uh, go see what Brian's up to. Yeah, Let me get him to say a few words. Thank you. Yeah, juice. That sounds fantastic. I've already kind of got that going. Of course. Did you bring your own mug? Please. Look what I, I brought yeah, the that you made it by. That is actually his. Is that red juice? Oh. You this got a loner. Turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. Oh my uh, Anti inflammatory. It's also really good for your memory. Yeah, and I hear it's so good. What am I taking? Yes, yes. It's kind of a wonder uh, root. Oh, okay. So uh, I got it in powder. I use ah. my when I blend my breakfast, yes. I put some of it in there. With pepper, you blend, you mix it with pepper, black pepper, mm. and then it is more effective in the body. At least that's what I do. How long have you been doing that? Just for a, a month or two now. Margrita told me about that. Ah, she's done so many wonderful things for you. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. And you get to see her every weekend now, or mm, almost? Every couple of weeks, every 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 month. sometimes once a month. Wow. I went to her weekend. You're to both her, lucky. To her place this past weekend. And how did that go? Really good. Yeah. So her friend of hers had a birthday party, so she asked me if I wanted to come over. Mm. She has this... It's going to get loud. Carrots are kind of very popular in the juicing world. Because they have a lot in them or do they taste good? A variety of reasons, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they do create a lot of juice. They do taste fantastic. They're, you know, they're really like good for you. They, they have, have a fair amount of potassium. And yeah. Kale doesn't have as much juice in it, of course. It takes a lot of kale to get some juice, but you know, you don't need a whole cup of kale juice no, no. Um, to get the nutrients, because if you put a whole pound of kale, kale in there, you're still getting, you know, pounds worth of nutrition. Whereas if you put, uh, you know, pineapple or cucumber or watermelon, it has such a high water content, that it's less nutrition. So it's, oh, that's, right. that's why people will do shots of ginger as opposed to a cup of ginger and you know, these kind of things. Can I have you say a few words about the show? Uh, welcome. Yeah. So, so who are you and where am yeah. I? I'm Brian Davis, uh, BFA Ceramics, and this is my senior show. You're at the Gatov West at California State University, Long Beach. It is March 13th, possibly, 2015. And I've created a space for makers to make, performers to perform, you know, healers to heal. And it's a very interactive show. You're supposed to get engaged at any level that you're comfortable with, whether it's just sitting on the couch and watching, or if it's actually touching objects. Uh, I feel that um, when I go to a museum or an art show, I want to touch everything, and I generally do, whether or not people are looking. And, and most of the times, you know, you just get, uh, you know, it's easier to ask for forgiveness, right? So I've created an environment where uh, I can be very forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I believe that uh, earlier in the day, a lot of the installation has been uh, described, but um, my desire in creating this space for makers is uh, speaking more of the direction that I want to go as to opposed to you know where I've been and what I've done while I'm here. 
or certainly objects that I've made in the room. But it's not about objects anymore for me. And Did it used to be? Yes. So you started there and, yeah. and have moved a little bit somewhere other than the object. Yeah. Or the object maybe as a part of an experience but not as an end in itself anymore. Certainly, certainly. I'm more excited about the experience. I feel that the experience is essential for the enrichment. Like to really get anything out of the situation, I feel it's best to just jump in there and take note of what's going on in the moment and whatever object is created and you know has this lasting power to it. It's, that's not what it's about to me anymore. Um, yeah. You know, I think I started as a little kid, as a performer. Oh, okay. You know, I was certainly a performer and then got into uh, drawing and painting, a little art school in Newport Beach, Sharon August Swing, um, at age eight and uh, was there for about two years. And my mom took me to a gallery in LA and I saw this white sphere and it was perforated and it was paper thin. And it was the first time a uh, 3D form like really appealed to me. And uh, I was like, mom, what is this? And so we like, look at the little plaque and it's, uh, it's porcelain, you know, 14 inch sphere uh, made by Tony Marsh. And uh, I instantly went back to this little art school that I'd been going to for a bit. And they actually had a ceramics class right after the drawing and painting. And I begged and we didn't have enough to pay for it, but they gave me like a, you know, a little tuition help. And, and I stayed with them for 10 years. And at age 18, when I'm graduating high school, they brought me on as an assistant teacher. I knew the program so well, and I was there from the beginning. Wow. I was like probably their fourth student to start. And uh, yeah, so I worked for them, with them for a couple of years um, while I went to college and really discovered what the art world consisted of, or at least what I thought it was, and it was really starting to disgust me, and I just wanted to make for myself. And uh, the objects that were being made were not satisfying. So I started at an art supply store and, you know, to get materials, and it still it was too close to the world. So I stepped out and I became a corporate contractor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Worked in the medical industry. Okay. Uh, there was body imaging, like CAT scans, MRIs, PET scans, these kind of things. And I was a technician. I traveled all around repairing uh, hardware, installing software, holding training sessions. And, and it paid well, but I also, once again, saw that the business model for that was almost identical to the art world. It's this, you know, very, it's capitalism, and that's it's what it is. And I finally just had to accept it. And, and it, so I, I took what I had gained from that experience and ran away to Santa Cruz and couldn't get a job anywhere. Uh, I wanted to work at a paint store and they're like, no, you're overqualified, you know, coming from the job before that. And I was like, I just want to make house paint. <laughs> and uh, stumbled into the local community college. They only have one, it's Cabrillo. Yeah. And that first semester, taking uh, two ceramic classes and two business classes. And the gentleman that was the technician for the ceramics department was uh, on his way out. Just got his master's. He wanted to teach as opposed to be the tech. So he trained me, I applied, I got the job. So, was, you know, without any degree or enough experience, uh, I became the technician. And uh, four beautiful years there, made a wonderful family, you know, friends, never been married, but uh, um, totally encouraging and suggested that I go back to school for my undergrad and just kind of round out my education. And there were so many people from Long Beach there they commanded that I go check it out. And so, I, you know, I visited about 10 different schools, applied to seven, got into all of them. But the one that I heard from last was Long Beach. And it was my first choice because I didn't know Tony Marsh was teaching here. And uh, that influenced you all those years right, ago. Right, exactly. Wow. I know. I just got the chills again, too. Um, and I just showed up in the middle of summer and I found some students in the ceramics department. You can always find it because you see the kilns and their flu. It's like you don't even need a map to find the ceramics department. And I asked, you know, where's the head of the department? And they said, oh, he's on sabbatical. I was like, great. And he's like, which means he's over at the spray booth, you know, because he doesn't actually <laughs> leave. Like, he just stays and works constantly. And so I go over, introduce myself, and he stops, gives me at least a half an hour. You know, it felt like an immense amount of time. And, answered every question, kind of got me prepped for what I needed to do. And I was like, this is the school. This is where I want to go to. 
Garrett Grimm was uh, building in the wheel room and she's uh, just this powerhouse of a little German woman that uh, throws every piece and then alters them into sculpture and that speaks a lot of our ceramic department. We don't use the wheel as a pottery mindset. We're not a, a pottery department. We're more about the sculpture and the, using it as a tool to help uh, make forms that then, then be altered and modified into a, a different sculpture altogether. She's very much a figure, figure artist and uh, so between seeing that work and the scope and the, the breath, the space that she was consuming and just how engaged she was and then I found out she was a teacher, it was just like pfft. So I, I waited and I finally heard from Long Beach and so grateful that I ended up here. Oh, so that conversation you had with Tony, you hadn't actually been accepted yet? No. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's what made it my first choice. That's what it was like, all right. Because I, I made sure to meet with the you know, heads of the departments at all the other schools, um, sit down and ask some questions and these kind of things. And, and just the, the level of engagement and the passion and his background. And, and I didn't realize even at that moment, because I, I hadn't been going through my whole career like, oh, I love Tony Marsh's work. <laughs> you know, it was this, uh, this epiphany after like seeing more of his work as I was a student here. It was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> you know? I know this person and it was such a huge influence. Wow. I remember the, the moment as a kid so uh, vivid because there was also uh, Jeff Koons' Bubble with Chimp was also seen within this same like short time period and that's also like the ceramic object that was like just baffling to me as well. So this combination of this very traditional classic uh, design based kind of uh, Japanese influenced forms of Tony Marsh and then just the, the kind of the crazy contemporary Koonzy as a little kid. It's just, uh, so you've invited, so you've got Maccabee over there and, and you had a whole bunch of other artists participating and you know, artist collectives have been so popular and so successful in recent years. I'm wondering you know, how you think about that versus your own ideas. I love what's been happening at like alternative spaces outside of the cube, like um, these grassroots kind of let's get together. We can. You know, the marketing so much easier now with the internet, uh, the accessibility, like, it's, it's, there's no reason why a group of artistic friends shouldn't uh, be creating some sort of collective. And, and this was happening in Santa Cruz, uh, Ill Works was the name of the group, and it, it was Jasper, Jasper Moreno and Tom Watson and Patrick Kingsland are all ceramic artists from Northern California that banded together I, you know, as the tech in the department, I just watched them grow and grow over those four years, and now they have a business together. Um, it's a, you know, community-centered uh, ceramics studio where you, you know, rent space by the time, you know, all these kind of things, and they're hugely, you know, happy and successful in doing their, their kind of thing. And so, down the road, you're looking to create an, an art hostel? That was the dream that I came to Long Beach with. And this is what I told Tony when I got here. It's like, because yes, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to be on the cover of Ceramics Monthly? Do you want to be in, you know, galleries across the world? I mean, this this kind of career can easily be your passport and like take you everywhere. And I said, well, I do love to travel, and, and what I would love for myself is a hostel. And I've been to like adventure hostels where they take you backpacking, cliff jumping, and hiking, and all these things. So. I'm like, well, why not an art hostel where you go to the museum one day, you go to a gallery the next day, we have a group activity the third, and like, just try to cr make this real creative space, and over time, like, build up a studio there so that it could also be my studio. And, uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's problematic, especially with ceramics, because it requires so much time, and most backpackers are in and out. So Tony was like, hmm, I do have a friend outside of Siena, 72-year-old, retired Egypt, just that has a similar dream. And then we didn't talk about it for about two years, and maybe close to three. And then right when uh, you know, I was getting close to graduate, right before uh, applications for grad schools were like really starting to roll, and he's like, oh, so I talked to my friend, and if you're still interested, um, why don't you go and help him establish his art center and catalog his collection of antiquities. And, so I'm going to be there from the beginning of, you know, So you're, you're flying off in a couple of weeks? Uh, less than three weeks from now. Wow. Yeah, I will. 
uh, thoroughly excited to, to get out there and just start building and working and, and the opportunity to do this under someone else's like guidance and he runs a bed and breakfast. I mean, how close is that to a hostel? I mean, it's right there and it's, it's agro-tourism, so it's agricultural, um, he's got organic farms all over his property, so I'll be able to juice there and, <laughs> you know, keep myself really healthy and, uh, and I mean, c come on, he's a... He's doing everything by himself now, but if he opens an art center, and if he opens a museum, and he has a bed and breakfast going, along with an organic farm, he's going to need some help. And uh, Maccabee and I being there from the beginning is a, is a good probability. Uh, but of course, we need to like the space, too. You know, we need to want the job. Got to see how it develops. About it. Yeah, yeah. I might just take this enriching experience and go start my own venue, or... I might fall in love. I don't know. I left myself open for it. Wow. Um, I didn't apply to grad school because of this. And other reasons, I'm, I'm sure. I uh, could totally get into that, but I... You know, we say things like art can be an adventure, but, but it seems like you've really redefined or deepened that concept. I wanted more out of it, yeah. you know? Um, after really experiencing what a studio artist, a real studio artist like Tony being here 14 hours, seven days a week, this is his life, he's always business. He, he does get to travel, he does get to go to openings of, of this kind of events and take students places, but it's not a regular kind of travel and it's, it doesn't uh, allot him the time to really be with uh, you know, his loved ones. And I want to be with my loved ones like regularly. And I, and I don't want to lock myself up in the studio, although I want to continue to make, and there's times when I'm totally introverted and want to be locked in the studio, but I just don't want to make that my total life. I want to get out there and like me. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it.